A sincere, pleasant day greeting to everyone. Welcome back to our channel for another episode of Presentations Through Science, Technology, and Society. Today, a really engaging topic awaits us. And so I, Riani Cabell, won't hold you long. Let's get right into the video. Wondering about life? Well, how about if we narrow down and zoom in on the good life? Your mind now probably runs through thoughts alike to these daunting images. Owning properties like a house or a car, being in a conventional family structure, prosperity in your job, fulfillment in serving people in the community, earning a bit more than enough, doing well in your studies, and traveling to many places. Somehow, it has long been a cliché to debate on how a good life is like. Too many perspectives and opinions can accumulate reasonable pictures of a good life. And so, after the over two-decade-old life that we have experienced and surpassed, let us together reach the objectives of today's lesson. But let us first reflect on a documentary by Damon Gamo entitled That Sugar Film. Damon Gamow is an Australian actor and a first-time feature documentary director who scared sugar out of its many hiding places as he dispels the myths about this pervasive and addictive substance. This quirky, energetic, and very informative documentary was released in 2014. Being the actual human lab rat in his entertaining cautionary tale about the hidden sugar content of everyday food products, Damon Gamo had really suffered its drastic effects at first hand. Prior to his 60-day experiment of consuming 40 teaspoons of hidden sugars per day from supposedly healthy foods, he had spent the most recent three years of his life in a sugar-free state since he met his wife and now awaits the birth of his first child. Under the supervision of doctors, nutritionists, and other health-related specialists, he continued to embark on his unique experiment to clearly document the effects of unconsciously being on a high-sugar diet from eating foods that are marketed to be healthy. By the end of his experiment, he had put on 8.5 kilograms, developed pre-type 2 diabetes, and heart disease risks, had an extra 10 centimeters of the dangerous visceral fat around his belly, and noticed an enormous impact on his moods and cognitive functions. He discovered the bitter truth about sugar and the issues that beset the sugar industry. Indeed, this saccharine-powered story full of scientific facts and industry tidbits is encouraging us all, healthy or not, to reflect on our own relationship with the sweet stuff. From Damon's experiment, all these aspects listed were greatly affected. His daily life was obviously barred by the constraints caused by that lifestyle. And that indeed would be living away from a good life. In order to recover from that dangerous lifestyle, one needs more understanding of the world and its reality. This idea originated in ancient Greece long before the word science was coined. For Plato, this runs parallel with the job of truly getting into what will make the soul flourish. And as supported by Aristotle's definitive distinction between the theoretical and practical sciences, one must seek for the truth first before he can even try to locate for the good. From these three concept bases, what could we mean by a good life? Well, it definitely onsets with finding and living by the truth in order to be able to locate which is good and then stay by it and continue to be productive and resilient through both challenges and chances that come our way. By going through such, one can bring himself to flourishing. Generally speaking, the good life is the quest for concepts such as peace, blessing, and maturity that reveal God's loving purpose for people to experience the very best form of life. Foremost, one needs to perceive that the good life is not only the vision or the destination, but as well as the means you took with your chance to get there. Getting to the good life also means directing all glory to where credit is due. As in life, we know too well that we can barely survive alone. In fact, being selflessly there for someone as he tries to walk through his good life is also living your good life at your best. And lastly, satisfying your material, psychological, spiritual, and emotional needs are equally important components or contributors to getting to that good life. But now, I just happen to get to a subsequent question. Where does our yearn for a good life come from? 
what stimulates us to seek for that good life? Well, I guess Christiane Kaharo can better enlighten us further, so we better hear from her.